Alternative day fasting is an alternative to the traditional carbohydrate reduction and weight loss strategy. Alternative day fasting requires patients to eat 75% less calories every other day for a prescribed period, usually, usually several weeks. Research has been done to determine which method is more sustainable. 100 patients were placed on the ADF plan for six months. At the end of the study, 79 of the patients had remained on the plan. 110 patients were given a CR plan to follow for six months, and 81 patients remained on the plan after six months. Using a 5% significance level, test the claim that the proportion of people that can remain on the ADF plan is the same as the proportion of those that can remain on the CR plan for six months. All right, so you see I've underlined some important phrases here. I've underlined the phrase test the claim because that tells us it's a hypothesis test. I've underlined the phrase proportion here to tell us that it's a hypothesis test about the proportion. And I've underlined the word same here because it's saying that the two groups have the same proportion basically. So let's start out by coming up with our claim for the hypothesis test, which is always our first step in a hypothesis test. Okay, so I'll have the claim that the proportion for the ADF group is equal to the proportion rho for the CR group, right? Now, HO and HA. All right, the alternative hypothesis and the null hypothesis are determined by looking at the symbol involved in the claim. If that's an equal sign there in the claim, it means it's the same as HO because HO is the claim that ha or the hypothesis that has equality. All right, and then we have the alternative hypothesis. And for that one, we're gonna use the not equal to symbol because we have to have the opposite of what HO has. Okay, from there, we're gonna write the data down. So we have ADF and we have the CR plan. Okay, so let's read the problem again for the data to see what the data is. It says 100 patients were placed on the ADF plan for six months. That's the end for ADF, 100. It says at the end of the study, 79 patients had remained on the plan. So the X here is 79. And then it says 110 patients were given a CR plan. So N would be 110. And 81 remained on the plan after six months. Then they have an alpha level of 5%. Okay, so before I put the alpha down, actually I actually can just write the alpha down here. I'm leaving a little space though because I want to squeeze in here my p hat values. So from this, I can estimate the population proportion for these groups by using a sample proportion p hat. And p hat for the ADF group is going to be x over n because that's the definition of p hat. So in this case, that's 0.79, right? 0.79. And for the CR, I have the same thing. It's p hat value will be 81 over 110, right? And I'll get that in a second for us. Let me just label ADF and CR here at the bottom of these values. Now, 81 over 110 is not a nice round number, so let's work that out. It's 81 divided by 110. When you do it, you get a, a non-ending decimal here. It looks like it is uh, 0 0.736, 0 0.736. So 0.736. Okay, now at that point from there, what we wanna do is take those values and the rest of the data and plug it into our test stat formula. Now the test stat formula officially is a Z test statistic because we're gonna approx approximate the distribution of the differences of the sample proportions by a Z distribution. Now, the formula starts out with the top being, in our case, uh, p hat for ADF minus p hat for the CR plan. Sometimes in some problems you could have a minus you know, d sub zero listed here, which is a, a number that you would find in HO if there was one. Uh, we have no numbers in our HO, and typically in elementary stats you don't see that, so our formula is pretty basic, it's just this. The difference between the sample proportions, and then we have the square root of, and then we have something called rho hat, then q hat times one over n1 plus one over n2. Now, these values here are special. This value, p hat, is actually a pooled estimator of the population proportion. 
for this problem. We're assuming the population proportion for both is the same, right? We're assuming that the row for ADF and the row for the carbohydrate reduction diet are the same. So we're going to use a pooled estimator of that value called p hat. And so under the HO, remember we assume HO to be true when we run our hypothesis test, we're going to assume that this um, common proportion can be estimated by this pooled proportion p hat. So what that number looks like is this. The formula is actually quite simple. It's just the sum of the x's in the problem divided by the sum of the n's. So that's the formula. So we can work that out for the specific problem. It's going to be 79 plus 81, or 160 on top, over 100 plus 110, or 210 on the bottom, right? So that's 160 over 210. All right, so let's see what that turns out to be as a decimal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to store it in my calculator so we have it for later use. Okay, now you can see in my calculator I have the calculation we did for p hat cr. I'm actually going to store that in my calculator. I'm going to store that as a variable. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want to have that for later. So I'm going to use it in my test stat formula and I don't want to have to truncate it around it. So I'm actually going to store it in there. You can just type in the full values. You don't have to actually, you know, because this goes on and on for a little bit. You can just um, put a couple extra decimal places to be sure that you're not rounding too much if you want. I'm just going to store it so I don't have to round it at all. So I stored it as a variable x. Okay, now that that's taken care of, let's do this part here, the 160 plus the 210. I mean, sorry, the 160 divided by 210. So 160 divided by 210. You're going to get an answer 0.7619, so on and so forth. Well, I'm going to store that in another variable. In fact, I'm going to store it in a very specific variable called p. So I stored it in p. Now, that's my p hat, right? So I know the answer then for this one is 0.761 dot dot dot, right? It goes on and on and on. From there, I can derive something called q hat. q hat is just 1 minus that p hat value that we just calculated. It's just the complement of that p hat value. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do 1 minus that value in my calculator. And when I do that, I get the answer 0 0.238, so on and so forth. Now, I didn't do that in my calculator just so that I could do the arithmetic without having to use my own brain. What I wanted to do is actually get it in my calculator so I could store it in a variable so I don't need to round it at all. So again, I'm going to store this under, again, a special letter. I'm going to store it under Q. This way, when I go to do my formula over here, I won't be doing any rounding. This is not necessary, absolutely necessary. You can just type in a few extra decimal places when you do the calculation over there just to make sure you're not introducing too much rounding error. But I like to store things in the calculator since my calculator is capable of doing that. I might as well make it as accurate as I possibly can. Okay, now from there, let's work out this formula. To do the test that formula, then we're going to have to plug in the numbers that we have. So we'll start with the row for ADF. We said that was 0.79. I'm sorry, I said row, it's the p hat value for ADF. The p hat value for CR was 0 0.736, 0 0.736. Then I'm going to divide that by the square root of the value we have for p hat, which is 0 0.761 dot 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 times 0.238 dot dot dot, right? So this is my p hat times my q hat. And all of that will be times 1 over 100 plus 1 over 110. All right, all that's under the square root. So it's probably harder to write down than to actually work out. Now let's plug in our numbers. So we're going to take in the calculator, the value 0.79, so in parentheses, I'll do this, sorry, 0 0.79 minus, remember I stored that other value because this value here actually goes on and on for a while. So I'm going to put my value there, which I'd stored in my calculator as x, then divide by the square root of, and then I had p times q, so I'm going to go ahead and do that in my calculator as p times q. I stored them there in that format. And then I'll use the parentheses, do 1 divided by 100 plus 1 divided by 110. Close up the parentheses, hit enter, and I have my answer for the entire calculation. It works out to be 0 0.911 dot dot dot, right? So basically, we'll round it off to say it's approximately 0 0.91. That's good enough for us. All right, so that's our z value. That's our test statistic. It's not even one standard deviation above average. So at that point, I'm thinking that we're probably not going to reject the null hypothesis, right? 
which means we're probably not going to reject the claim. But let's make sure by getting a critical value and comparing this value against that. Okay, so in order to get the critical value, we have to draw a bell curve, right? Standard procedure, draw a bell curve. And on the bell curve, we want to label the rejection region or draw the rejection region. So looking at the HA here, we can see it's a not equal to value or symbol in the middle. And that means we're going to have a two-tailed test. We have two rejection regions, a rejection region on the left, a re rejection region on the right. It's not likely that we're going to end up rejecting anything, though. So this number, of course, will probably be in the white space. But to be sure, let's get the critical values. The way we're going to get the critical values is we're actually going to look up this 5% on our T table. But we're going to go way to the bottom where we have the large sample size value, or in other words, the Z value at the bottom of the table. And we're looking up 0.05 and two tails. So we're actually going to be looking up um, for each tail Z.025. Z.025. That's the value that you're going to find here. So let's go to our table and look that up. So we're going to look up the point in the 0 0.025 column, straight to the bottom, looking for the value. We're actually going to see that that value is 1.960. It's a pretty famous value from the table. But let's go make sure by looking at the table and confirming that. OK, so we're looking for the 0 0.025 in one tail. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom until we get to the z-score value. So all the way down to the bottom until we get to the z-score value, which is 1.96, 1 1.96. Okay, so of course we confirm that the value here is 1.960 and negative 1.960. And then from there we can see that the test stat clearly lands in the do not reject region. So our conclusion then, our initial conclusion is do not reject HO. And of course that also means that we do not support HA. Do not support HA. Okay, so basically what we're saying here is that we do not reject the claim because the claim is HO, right? So do not reject HO means we do not reject the claim, which means we're going to leave the claim standing as is. This data does not contradict that. So basically we're saying that for now we'll go on to continue to believe that the proportion that can re remain on both diets is in fact the same.